Hey everyone, uh, your favorite armchair theologian here. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on these days and everybody has something to say, so I thought I'd jump in the mix. Why not, right? Um, so I wanted to talk really quick about prophecy. So I thought I'd give you what I think is a balanced perspective. Um, and this isn't to suggest that I have all the answers, because believe me, I don't. Um, but there are some things I know for sure. As my sarcastic comment is loading, please wait. The purpose of prophecy is threefold. It's to edify, to exhort, and to comfort. I'm sure you're familiar with this word edifice, right? Like a building or a structure. Build up. During this time, there's been a lot of talk of how people kind of come to the reality or have acknowledged the obvious truth that the church is not a building, it's a people. Secondly, exhort. To exhort can simply be to call to action, uh, can be an urging, right? Or a reminder of how we're to be, how we should think, even preparing for future things that may come. And lastly, uh, comfort. Whether it's encouragement, uh, confirmation and affirmation as many of us are spending time socially distancing ourselves. As well as, uh, I'll say, humble reprimands uh, of those who are in leadership and we expect to, to do better, to know better, to use wisdom. Last week, while I was in my Greek class, the professor was talking about Jesus' preaching of the kingdom and how the repentance that he was speaking to was, as we all should know, repentance means to change the way you think, right? Um, but more specifically, in his preaching of the kingdom of God, Jesus is challenging his listeners to stop thinking about the way you used to think about things, right? The status quo. And to embrace this new reality, this God type of thinking of what is here and what is to come. And so for a moment, I want to share uh, some thoughts in terms of that. So I hope you'll indulge me. So I hope you'll indulge me. We have to change the way we think about what was, what is, and will be. The question is how will you, how will we, how will I go about living differently if indeed prior to this disruption we have been participating in a status quo type of thinking. You know, this before the inherent end of all things. Many believers are missing out on the opportunity right in front of us because we have this tendency to cling to the apocalyptic language that appears in the Bible, whether it's Ezekiel or Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, or Revelation. We'll presume that everything around us are the signs of the times, and much like Peter on the day of Pentecost, we'll say this is that. Say this is that. Say this is that. Well, regardless of how you read the signs, whether you're a PhD having systematic theologian or a newborn babe in Christ, I need you to understand something. And if this is the only thing you ever learned from me, please hear me clearly. Christ wants to do more than prepare you to go to heaven. He wants to make room for heaven on earth through you. That's right. Regardless of what you think you've done or whether you deserve another chance, God is expecting the kingdom of God to come here through you. You are the vehicle. You are plan A. You are the only option. How much of a waste and how sad of a story if we only look to escape this world? If indeed this is our only chance, which it isn't, wouldn't we want it to count for everything it's possibly worth? This is why the kingdom is such a critical concept to grasp. Not just for Christians, but for all people. It's a new way of everything. Should we hope to return to normal? Everything as it was, no changes, we failed. There's a difference between understanding what's healthy, what works, vices just returning to what was comfortable and familiar. Everything that's written in the text we have called the Bible points to Jesus. And Jesus points to the kingdom of God, which is the message given to him by his father to preach. He told, to, he told the people to repent because of the kingdom. I need you to start thinking about things differently because if you hold on to that old mentality, if you hold on to the old ways of thinking, if you hold on to the old ways of being, you can't get to where we're going. Come on, ride that train. Something new is here. Old things have passed away. It's brand new right now. It'll take time for the newness to kind of fully set in, but it's here. So we have to change the way that we think about that. Each and every day, I want us to ask ourselves one question. And be gracious with yourself if you don't have an answer or if by some stretch of the imagination you feel you didn't achieve the goal. Ask yourself this. How have I advanced the kingdom? Was it a kind word? A gesture? Some action that caused you to step outside of your comfort zone because you knew it needed to be done and we didn't have the time to wait on somebody else to do it. Sometimes we think it's the big things in life that we need to worry about when, in fact, often, if we take care of the small details, everything else will take care of itself. I think back to the government shutdown here in America not too long ago and how people came together to take care of one another. Surely, 
This is evidence that many people understand the two commandments that Jesus often spoke about. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't have eyes to see what can't be seen, when it arrives, you won't recognize it. This is a time to rejoice. I get it. There's a lot of grief. We're losing people left and right. It's been said that somebody said people are dying who have never died before, which fact check is partially true because the wages of sin is what? Come on, church. Isn't it high time we invest in a concept, an idea, a reality that is literally worth its weight, its glory, in gold? Days. Where we're going. We don't need days. But heaven is here. Heaven is now. So until that full manifestation is complete, there will be a tension. A tension between what was and what will be. A tension between our hopes and dreams and the challenge, oftentimes the struggle, to hope and dream in new ways. I don't ask you to stop grieving. But while you grieve, think of how the creation is groaning for you. That's Romans 8 and 20, by the way. I don't ask you to throw away your loneliness or curve in on yourself and think that you have to do this alone. But I want you to believe that Without the saving work, listen to me clearly, without the saving work God is giving you to carry out, many more people are going to experience exactly what you have experienced and are experiencing right now because no one has thought of themselves enough to make a difference. And I want you to know that you are enough, that you have enough. And if enough is all that you got, honey, enough, your enough is what we need right now. Lastly, I don't ask you to ignore the realities around you and pretend as if everything is okay. I don't ask you to fantasize or zone out in an effort to escape. But I do ask you to hope, to dream, to think, obey your leaders, and prepare for a better and brighter tomorrow. If God has used COVID-19 for anything, it's to restore the health of his creation. Because truth be told, it would have taken us way too long to return the skies to blue and the trees to green. God has created a wonderful world. And I believe that there were those who came and made a mess of it. Uh, them who were likely here before human being ever stepped face on this earth. Regardless of the origin story you ascribe to, you got to believe that the earth can breathe again. Humanity is not at the center of his story. Creation is, which means salvation is actually about all of creation and not specifically about humans. Certainly, we need to be reconciled to God, but it's the reconciling and restoration of all things. The sooner we embrace that, the better off we'll be. Let's ensure whatever we do, however we live from here on out, that we would resolve to be a breath of fresh air to those around us and all of creation. As far as I'm concerned, this is a real meaningful prophecy. Oh.